What's going on everybody, GameSci back with another video. Now, as you can probably see, what's in front of you here is an Atari 520ST FM. It was a very popular 16-bit console back in my day. The main rival to the Commodore Amiga, which I'm a huge fan of. The 520 was the base model, the FM so the fact that it had a floppy disk drive and a modulator already built in. Now, this was acquired by my local retro games store, which is called That Retro Games Store, in the Newcastle's Granger Market. A great place. It's appeared on one or two of my videos before. Be sure to check it out. Anyway, they got this in with a bunch of odds and bobs. And they don't really deal too much in computers. And the owner couldn't get it to work. So he said to me, can you have a look at it? I had a look at it. And this is what I found. So, yep, as you can see, it is powering up. And is displaying a picture. Which is a great start. However. I've seen it. As the F on the name stands for, it has a built-in floppy drive. It goes in like that. The floppy drive activates. But it can't read it. Now I've tried this with a few discs and it doesn't read any of them. I do have a working Atari ST, um, which does read these discs, so basically I think the technical term for it is that the floppy drive is goosed, which is quite common on these, it's very common on Amigas. Um, so yeah, I reported back to that retro game shop in Newcastle, and Kev, the owner there, said, look it's not his sort of thing anyway. He can't be asked to try and fix it. Basically, just keep it. So I have kept it until now, when I've just received to a fellow on Facebook. Ta-da! A floppy drive. So I'm going to put this in this and hopefully play this. Let's see if it works. Okay, lid off and we are inside. That's a little bit grubby. Give this a bit of a clean whilst I'm in here. Basically, this is the disk drive here. I should just unscrew. Fits underneath this shielding here. Should be able to connect all this up. Hopefully this will work. All right, the disk drive is out. The new one will fit in there with the usual connectors. Those are just a standard, basically, IDE. Um, giving it a bit of a wipe down, got rid of a lot of the crud now that I've got the casing off. Not a great deal I can do about these rust spots on the shielding, but I don't suppose that'll matter once the case is back on. So now let's just attach the new drive. This it'll touch straight in here, connect with the connectors on the end, and then we can give it a try. Well, it's all hooked up, and needs to be put back together underneath that, but as you can hear, something's happening. Yeah. Thundercats is loading, so at least that's working. Right, time to try and get this all back together again. Hopefully don't lose any screws. Now important thing to know when taking apart an Atari ST, you have these various screw holes. If the screw hole is square looking like this, it means it's for the casing. So you take all these out to remove the top case. Over this side, the round screw holes. Or what hold the floppy drive into place. 
so you'll need to take them all out to remove the drive but if you just want to get inside leave these as they are otherwise the drive will fall out okay so everything's all back together now for the moment of truth we have a power light we have a floppy light won't find anything because I haven't got a disc in there yet we have a TV screen which has gone white Just it checks the disk drive come on We have a workbench. It's time to stick a disc in. Chugging away. Oh, and excuse the terrible picture, trying to record from a CRT with a mobile phone and the signal's only going through an RF cable anyway, isn't the best. That appears to be loaded. So oh, everything put back together and discs are now loading great however all is not perfect um, I'll start the game yeah that's great and yep yeah, I can move however I can't move left or right Fireworks, up works, zoom down works, I don't know, you don't use down in this game, but left and right doesn't. So it looks like there's going to be a part two to this. I'm going to call Operation Floppy Replace a success, but next job is to pull it apart and check the soldering on the um, joystick ports. So, look forward to another video where hopefully I fix joystick ports on Atari ST. But as far as fixing um, the floppy drive, all done. I've been Gamersai. Keep ahead.